And in the center of the room stands a large ebony uh, table covered with an Indian carpet, just like in Holland. At the window, a large writing desk on a turned base. Looking outside, we see the open outer veranda that runs along the whole width of the house, further the garden, the stables, the coach house, and the slaves' quarters. My visit to the large house was almost over, but before leaving this room, I was allowed to take a quick look in a cupboard. An insane amount of Batavian silver blinded my eyes, designed according to European custom to be used as plates, terrines, candlesticks, water jugs, and serving bowls. So thus far, the account of our imaginary visit. Twenty years later, a terrible disaster struck Batavia. Due, among other things, to declining prosperity and Chinese gangs roaming outside the city, Dutch sailors and slaves began to riot against the Chinese population in Batavia. The government proved to be unable to deal with the situation, with the result that Chinese homes were plundered and the inhabitants were murdered or driven away. Falconer, the governor general, was held responsible and after, after a lengthy trial was sentenced to be beheaded while his possessions were declared forfeit. However, he died in prison in Batavia before the sentence was executed. As a result, Batavia was a dead city for nearly 10 years. Those furniture makers who had survived the murders moved on to other places and spread out the Dutch style uh, of furniture making. This led to a great increase in import of furniture from Sri Lanka in those days. This one is from southern uh, Sri Lanka, from Gaul, made of uh, satin wood. But in 1752, during the large birthday celebration of, for the widow of Prince Willem IV, Princess Anne of Hanover, the city apparently once again bustled with entertainment. Chinese and Indonesian wayang, music and dancing, and especially much Chinese and Indonesian food, apparently had allowed people to forget or at least lessen their mutual distrust. In this period before the murders, uh, the rich neighborhood which bordered the Chinese one was in decline. Many rich families, like those along the Tigersgracht we just discussed, had houses built along Molenvliet, the present-day Jalan Katyamada. These country homes are laid out quite differently from city houses and are much larger. Generally speaking, they consist of two large halls, one behind the other, with large rooms on either side, topped by a second story. Looking at the inventories, we must conclude that furniture makers had no cause for complaint. There were houses with more than 400 chairs. After 1720, the old ebony and Kaliatu furniture we have seen in the house uh, on the Tijgersgracht was completely out of fashion and had been replaced by uh, furnishing in the modern, then modern Dutch Daniel Moreau style. Even Chinese furniture makers adopted this style for their Dutch and Chinese Peranakan clients. This is now there in the Gretia Sion, in the church, Sion Church, and before the Portuguese about the kerk. It's still standing there with a lot of other chairs, but it's the most beautiful. It was intended for the governor general. And also this one, typical. Chinese chair, but only available then in Batavia. But you see in the panels that is quite uh, Baroque or Daniel Moreau style. The shape of the chair is really Chinese. But much furniture made of billion dudes came also from Sri Lanka, like this one. This is my collection, but there's a similar one in museums, uh, Museum Sadiara of Taman Fatihila in Jakarta. In every house could also be found cheaper Chinese teakwood chairs for daily use. Lacquered red or lacquered black. You see here, 
simple chairs in a Chinese, during a Chinese funeral, somewhat European, but anyway, made by Chinese probably. Due to the inten intense use they received, few of these uh, have survived, and those that have no longer have their original coloring. In the second half of the 18th century, we see an increase in teakwood common chair made in Japan's Louis styles. In the meantime, the way the furniture was arranged had substantially changed. Fewer chairs and benches stand along the wall than had done before. Display cabinets filled with porcelain, caskets and gilded marble top side tables tend everywhere. On these tables stood clocks or arts objects from China, Japan or even Europe. Especially the Indonesians had clocks, they were fond of it, European or Dutch clocks. In the center stood a trichtrak table, in English backgammon table, but uh, the game is somewhat different but from trichtrak. But uh, the board is the same. Also, other tables with chairs arranged around them uh, you can find everywhere. For receptions, armchairs were arranged in circles or, or in rows facing to each other. The number of spittoons made of brass, silver, Chinese porcelain seems to even have increased. You see it here also, the, the big one in front and on the table, the smaller ones, probably silver. The Chinese chair with two backs, as you have seen before, uh, and this derived of this chair, uh, the veranda chair and the Burkemaster chairs were of totally new design and invented by local cabinet makers in the Indies in Sri Lanka and Indonesia, on places where the Dutch held sway. And this is a painting by Bainon, giving the feel the Dutch must have had during their life in Asia. I hope that I have given you a conception of what the Dutch did here in Asia as, as traders in art and how they enjoyed their life in Asia. Thank you. If you have something to ask, I try to explain it. In Indonesia, uh, after 1700, most, peop most furniture makers were Chinese furniture makers uh, in, in Batavia, but also probably elsewhere in, uh, on Java. Uh, before 1700, were Tamil furniture makers. And uh, I, I think uh, perhaps after 1900, there came some more European furniture makers. But between 1700 and 1900, all was done by Chinese furniture makers, except then in the short period, 1740, 1750. We have seen this shape uh, in Indonesia, but also the, the sea vaults uh, in, the, in the Portuguese. So I think it must be somewhere coming from uh, India or Indonesia, Sumatra. But it's never found elsewhere. They also exist in Holland. Uh, they were made in Holland, but there were smaller ones, but with the same, same shape. But I, I couldn't find where it was invented, so to say. 
Hi, could I just ask um, the first, you know, when you showed us a tour of the of the house mm. uh, in in the city, uh, a lot of the furniture had um, the the base where there were spirals. Mm. Yeah, uh, could you tell us more? Um, you know, where does that originated f from, and what? Well, it, it, it's apparently a very common theme in, in most of the, the furniture, and, and why is that so? You mind the, the spiral turned uh, legs and bed comes from? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The spiral turning. Uh, is uh, invented uh, not by Europeans. It was already a long time in the Middle East, uh, but not this size. And uh, around 1630, 35, there was an, uh, an, an uh, Italian architect who made uh, uh, in the, in the St. Peter's in, in Rome an additional building inside. Uh, with four columns, and that that were the columns with uh, a spiral, spirally turned uh, uh, form shape, and that was of great influence in Europe. And some ten years later, you found that everywhere in furniture, especially in Holland, and in England, uh, later also in in France and Italy, not so so many, but it was around 1650. It was uh, new a new style in Europe. And shortly after that, it was introduced in, in Asia or copied by the Asian uh, furniture makers, especially in uh, Southeast India, in Tamil Nadu. They, they made furniture for the Europeans, for the Dutch and English, uh, not m anymore for the Portuguese, uh, I uh, presume, because they were kicked out already. Uh, and they did also the, the carving that was that shallow, shallowly uh, carved uh, figures on it uh, is also in the style of the mid 17th century of Europe and later on with the big flowers that's also typical for the style in Europe uh, after 1680 so that is a European influence but uh, freely adopted uh, by uh, by Indian uh, carvers and, and furniture makers and they, they were not slaves they did it uh, as uh, uh, just for the for the work uh, for the Europeans, but because of the wars there, uh, they had to sell themselves to have food, and the Dutch bought uh, especially uh, craftsmen. They were in, uh, interested in that, and uh, these these slaves were uh, not so bad treated as they were done in, for example, Suriname or or uh, Americas, where they were uh, maltreated and was very bad, uh, a bad position to be a slave there. But in, let's say, in Jakarta, uh, the slaves were, the, the first slaves, like uh, the Indians, were, uh, were carvers, furniture makers, and uh, appreciated. And it was even so that slaves could have also slaves. And there was one slave uh, of, an, uh, of an governor general, governor general, Cornel Spilman, who had himself 80 slaves. But he didn't want to buy himself free because then he had lost his position. And he was near the fire, so to say. Yeah. Uh, was there any style guides for the ca uh, carvers, uh, the furniture makers? And were the chairs mass produced and then for someone to go and buy them? Or were they different for each patron in every home? Uh, no, there is a, a style developed. Uh, for example, the, that that carving with with big flowers that was uh, probably uh, taken over from uh, from uh, drawings, uh, Dutch drawings, and then it it uh, was uh, suddenly a style by itself, and every time everybody uh, copied it, so it was a real style. And they uh, th there are also some. Uh, I've uh, some ebony uh, pieces of furniture with a different style by, made by individual carvers, but most is of the same style as if uh, only one man during the time made all the furniture, uh, very close, uh, closely related. I can. The, 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 the 
Yeah, it is not for la it is not n it is not so for ladies, but it's possible to sit as a lady there. <laughs> yeah, you have to choose then one side, but but most men uh, are sitting uh, spread there. But this Chinese one, and of course there were cushions, uh, so it is a comfortable chair. I uh, it is uh, I've used it many times, so, and I still fits in it. <laughs> Maybe women sat differently in the 17th century with a different style of sarong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, Jan, thank you very much um, for a wonderful lecture and uh, answering questions. If people want to um, ask more questions, why don't you come up and say, but thank you very much, Jan. Huh? Thank you. <laughs>